Have you ever stopped to think about where you'd go if society took a drastic turn? A place where you could feel safe, secure, and in control? Let's find out what options you have if and when martial law ever affects us. Starting with an off-grid cabin. An off-grid cabin is a secluded bug-out location that holds a certain allure for those seeking self-reliance and safety. Imagine a place nestled deep in the woods or hidden in the mountains, far removed from the noise and chaos of civilization. It's more than just a retreat, it's a potential fortress of solitude. I've always been drawn to the idea of a cabin in the woods, a place to escape the city, to reconnect with nature, and to find peace. But as the world becomes increasingly uncertain, the concept of an off-grid cabin takes on a new significance. It's not just about relaxation, it's about preparedness. Envision a cabin fully stocked with the essentials for survival. Food, water, medical supplies, and even tools for self-defense. It's like creating your own self-sufficient ecosystem. The isolation of such a location offers a sense of security, reducing the likelihood of being caught up in potential conflicts. However, living off the grid requires a certain level of skill and resilience. You need to be knowledgeable about survival techniques, capable of handling physical challenges, and mentally prepared for solitude. It's not a lifestyle for everyone, but for those who are drawn to independence and self-reliance, an off-grid cabin could be a compelling option. Remember, the goal isn't to become a survivalist, it's about having options, about expanding your understanding of what's possible. An off-grid cabin is one of many potential safe havens, and it's important to weigh the pros and cons carefully before making a decision. Coming in at number 8, we have friends and family. Now this might seem like a no-brainer, but it's important to consider it carefully. Seeking refuge with those you trust inherently provides a powerful sense of security. It's not just about having a roof over your head, it's about being surrounded by loved ones who genuinely care about your well-being. Imagine this, you and your closest friends or family members have a plan. You've discussed the possibility of needing to band together, and you've identified a safe haven. Whether it's someone's home with ample supplies, or a secluded location you can all reach. The idea of facing uncertainty together, with people who have your back, is incredibly comforting. Pooling resources with friends and family can be a real game changer. We're talking about shared food and water supplies, medical essentials, and even defense mechanisms. More hands make light work, and in a survival scenario, this could mean the difference between overcoming challenges and struggling. But it's not just about the practicalities. The emotional support that comes from being with loved ones can't be underestimated. In a situation fraught with uncertainty and fear, maintaining mental health is just as important as physical health. Being with people who make you laugh, who understand your anxieties, and who offer a shoulder to cry on can be a powerful source of strength. However, remember one thing. If you choose to group together with your loved ones, Communication and cooperation are key. There will be challenges, and there will be disagreements. But by working together and remembering the bigger picture, you can create a safe and supportive environment for everyone. Remember, there's strength in numbers. By banding together with those you trust, you can not only increase your chances of survival, but also find solace and connection during a difficult time. Number seven on our list is the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is a fascinating place. It's a double-edged sword. On one hand, it offers isolation, a chance to disappear, to become one with the wild. The vast expanse of untouched land can feel like a sanctuary, a place where you can truly be off the grid. I remember a backpacking trip I took years ago. I spent a week alone in the mountains. There was something incredibly liberating about disconnecting from the world, about relying on myself for survival, I felt a deep sense of peace and resilience. In a way, it was like a practice run for a more challenging situation. The wilderness is a place where you can rediscover your inner strength. It's a place to test your limits, to learn about yourself on a deeper level. It's about pushing beyond your comfort zone and finding resourcefulness you never knew you had. It's about embracing the unknown, trusting your instincts and relying on your own abilities. But let's be honest, the wilderness is no walk in the park. It can be harsh and unforgiving. 
You're at the mercy of the elements. Finding food and water can be a challenge, and you need to know your way around. It's essential to have a solid set of survival skills, from hunting and fishing to building shelter. You're not just hiding, you're surviving. It's also important to be mentally prepared. The wilderness can be a lonely place. You'll need to be able to cope with isolation, boredom, and even fear. It's about finding inner peace and resilience, even when things get tough. However, for those with the right mindset and skill set, the wilderness can be a true sanctuary. It's a place where you can find peace, clarity, and a deep connection with nature. It's a place to recharge, to reconnect yourself, and to find a sense of purpose. So, while the wilderness can be a compelling option, it's important to weigh the pros and cons carefully. Are you prepared for the challenges? Do you have the necessary skills? Only you can decide if this is the right path for you. Ranking at number six, we have Prepper Communities. These are groups of people who, like you, believe in being prepared for whatever life throws your way. They embody the saying, unity is strength. Within these communities, resources are shared, ensuring no one person carries the entire burden of survival. Imagine having a collective pantry stocked with enough food and water to last for an extended period. It's like having a safety net, knowing that your basic needs are covered. Also, the security in such communities is unparalleled. With everyone looking out for each other, it's like having a built-in security system. You can sleep soundly knowing you're surrounded by people who have your back. But it's not just about physical safety. Prepper communities are also treasure troves of knowledge. From basic survival skills to advanced first aid, there's always someone to learn from. It's like having a walking encyclopedia of survival tips at your disposal. I've always been drawn to the idea of community. There's something powerful about connecting with people who share your values and goals. In a challenging situation, having a support system can make all the difference. Of course, joining a prepper community is a big decision. It requires a certain level of commitment and trust. You'll need to find a group that aligns with your values and beliefs. But if you're looking for a sense of belonging and a strong support system, a prepper community might be worth considering. Remember, it's not about fear or paranoia. It's about being prepared and taking control of your own safety and well-being. It's about building resilience and fostering a sense of community. Coming in at number five, we have big cities. Now this might seem counterintuitive. After all, cities are bustling, crowded places, the exact opposite of a peaceful retreat. But hear me out. Big cities do have their advantages. They're hubs of activity filled with resources, food, Medicine and other essentials are more likely to be available, especially if supply lines are still operational. Plus, there are countless places to hide, from abandoned buildings to sprawling underground systems. I remember living in New York for a few years. The energy was electric, the opportunities endless, but I also learned to appreciate the quiet moments, the hidden corners where you could escape the noise. Those skills of observation and adaptability can be invaluable in a crisis. However, let's be honest, cities also come with their challenges. Law enforcement presence is higher, making it more difficult to move around unnoticed. The sheer number of people can make it hard to blend in, and if panic sets in, things can get dangerous quickly. It's like being a fish in a big pond. You can easily get lost in the crowd, but you also have to be constantly aware of your surroundings. It's a balancing act between taking advantage of the city's resources and staying under the radar. The key is to be prepared. Know your city inside and out. Have escape routes planned. Know where to find supplies, and most importantly, be ready to adapt. It's about being resourceful, resilient, and always one step ahead. So, while big cities might not be the first choice for everyone, they can offer unique opportunities for survival. It's all about weighing the risks and rewards and deciding if it's the right path for you. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all answer when it comes to finding a safe haven. The best place for you depends on your individual circumstances, skills, and preferences. 
Ranking at number 4, we have small towns or rural areas. Now don't let their unassuming nature fool you. These places hold a mighty strength that can be invaluable in a crisis. I grew up in a small town. Everyone knew everyone, and there was a strong sense of community. It was a place where neighbors looked out for each other, where you could leave your door unlocked without a second thought. That kind of trust and support is something truly special. Small towns often have lower population densities, which means fewer people to compete with for resources. You're less likely to experience the chaos and congestion of a big city. Plus, there's often a closer connection to the land, which can be a huge advantage in terms of self-sufficiency. Imagine having access to fresh air, open spaces, and the ability to grow your own food. It's a different kind of security, a sense of independence that can be incredibly empowering. And let's not forget about that strong sense of community. In times of crisis, having people you can rely on is essential. It's about knowing that you're not alone, that you have a support system to help you through tough times. So, while small towns might not offer the same level of excitement as a big city, they can provide a sense of peace, security, and community that is hard to find elsewhere. It's about slowing down, connecting with nature, and relying on the strength of human connection. Remember, the best place for you to hide out is the one where you feel most safe and secure. It's about knowing yourself, your skills, and your resources, and choosing the option that best fits your needs and abilities. At number three, we have the option of moving outside the affected area. Now this might seem like the most obvious solution, but it's not always as simple as packing a bag and hitting the road. It requires careful planning, timing, and a clear understanding of the potential challenges. The major advantage of relocating is that you're likely to find relative safety and normalcy outside the area under lockdown. You're escaping the immediate danger and the restrictions that come with it. The situation is likely to be less tense, and you may have more freedom to move around and live your life. I remember a time when there was a big hurricane heading towards my coastal town. Everyone was rushing to evacuate. It was chaotic, but it was also a stark reminder of the importance of having a plan. We managed to get out just in time, and we were incredibly grateful for the opportunity to escape the storm's wrath. However, don't forget that leaving your familiar surroundings also means venturing into the unknown. You'll need to be prepared for new challenges, and possibly even different kinds of danger. You'll be starting over in a new place, building a new life, which can be both exciting and daunting. When deciding to relocate, consider your financial resources since moving can be costly, including transportation, housing, and living expenses. Assess the support network you have, such as family or friends in the new area, as they can provide crucial assistance during challenging times. Evaluate job prospects to ensure there are opportunities in your field if you're employed or seeking work. Finally, think about your long-term plans, whether the move is permanent or temporary, as this will impact your decisions about housing, employment, and other aspects of your life. It's important to weigh the pros and cons carefully before making a decision. Talk to people who have relocated, research your options thoroughly, and create a detailed plan. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer. The best decision is the one that feels right for you and your family. Despite the potential difficulties, moving outside the affected area can be a great strategy for those who have the means and the opportunity. It's about weighing up the risks and making the best decision for your safety and well-being. Remember, sometimes the best hiding place is away from the danger. Coming in at number two, we have the option of seeking refuge in a neighboring country. This might seem like a drastic measure, but it's important to consider all possibilities when faced with uncertainty. Your home country, once a familiar and safe haven, might become a place of instability or danger. Seeking refuge in a neighboring country offers a chance to escape potential turmoil and regain a sense of control over your life. These neighboring countries often have different legal and political systems. This can offer advantages in terms of safety and protection, particularly if your home country is experiencing a breakdown of law and order. 
Imagine having access to a different set of rules and regulations, potentially providing a safer environment for you and your family. However, it's crucial to approach this decision with careful consideration. Researching the political and economic climate of the potential host country is essential. Understanding their policies regarding refugees and immigrants is vital. It's about finding a place that not only offers safety, but also respects human rights and has a positive relationship with your home country. Leaving your home country is a significant step, filled with both challenges and hopes. You'll be venturing into the unknown, building a new life in a foreign land. It's essential to prepare for this transition, both emotionally and practically. Consider factors such as language barriers, cultural differences, and economic opportunities in the host country. Your home, the place you've invested time, energy, and love, can be your most potent sanctuary during turbulent times. It's a space intimately known, offering a level of comfort and familiarity unmatched by any other location. This familiarity is a powerful tool. You understand its nuances, its vulnerabilities, and its strengths. Your home is more than just shelter. It's a fortress with you as its architect and guardian. Beyond the emotional connection, your home likely contains essential resources for survival. Food, water, first aid supplies, tools. These are the building blocks of resilience. With careful planning, you can transform your living space into a fortified refuge. Consider implementing additional security measures, creating escape routes, and establishing communication protocols. It's about turning your house into a home base, a place of safety and security from which you can weather any storm. However, it's crucial to balance preparedness with practicality. Your home should remain a place of peace and comfort, not a constant reminder of potential threats. Avoid turning your living space into a bunker mentality. Focus on building resilience without compromising your quality of life. Remember, your home is more than just a physical structure. It's a reflection of you, your values, and your priorities. By fortifying your home, you're not just protecting yourself physically, but also reinforcing your sense of control. It's about taking ownership of your safety and well-being. Ultimately, the decision of where to seek refuge is a deeply personal one. Your home offers a foundation of familiarity and resources, but it's essential to consider other options and create a comprehensive preparedness plan. Whether you choose to stay put, relocate, or seek refuge elsewhere, remember that your safety and well-being are paramount. By understanding your options, building resilience, and fostering a strong support network, you'll be better equipped to navigate any challenges that may arise. Remember, you're not alone. There are others going through the same thing. Reach out to your loved ones, your community, and seek support when you need it. Together, we can face any storm. But knowing where to be during martial law isn't enough. Click the video on screen now to learn how to survive the first 30 days after any disaster.